Hi, my name is Rune, and I'm part of the Emacs Studio development team. Today I'll be showing you some of the new features in Emacs Studio 1.1, which has just been released uh, to the public. Now, um, I'm going to start off by selecting a PDF here for demonstrational purposes. And um, some of the features I'll be showing in this demonstration is, uh, amongst others, the uh, new mobile publishing workflow, the uh, publishing wizard, and uh, some of the new actions and events and advanced functionality we have in this version. Now I'm just going to wait for the PDF to load into Emacs Studio. Um, and I'm going to take the wizard as my starting point for this demonstration to best show you how these new features are integrated. Now, as you can see, my PDF is loading up here, and uh, the wizard looks more or less as it did in Emacs Studio 1 uh, with a few new additions. Now, I want to start off with some of the most important new features, so I'll be jumping straight to the publishing step uh, to showcase the mobile publishing feature and to show you the new publishing wizard which has been introduced in this version. So, uh, to begin with, I'll skip straight to publishing by clicking the publish button in the lower right corner. So as you can see now, um, what will pop up is the new publishing wizard which was introduced in this version. Now, this allows you to easily get your Emac online, offline, or to publish to any location you want uh, by following through on a few simple steps. Now, you can, you can take the same approach as you could in previous Emac Studio versions and simply go in and pick a publishing profile, and all your previously created publishing profiles will be available. Or you can take the wizard, which will then take you through a series of questions to get your PDF published any way you want. Now, let's say I want to uh, try out the new mobile editions. Then I would go for an online Emac, since mobile is only supported in online Emacs. I click Next, and I'm asked where I want my Emac to go. Now, I want to put this straight to an FTP server, and I want to include mobile support in online editions. Now, this basically uh, enables the mobile support in your Emac and automatically publishes a version that can be seen on iPhones, iPads, and uh, iPod Touch. So I've included this, and if I click Next, I'm asked to type in my FTP options. Now, since I won't be doing the actual publishing now, that will take a little too long for this demonstration, and I don't have an FTP server on hand, I've cheated a little bit, and uh, as you can see here, I've used a simple iPhone simulator uh, running in Chrome to demonstrate to you how an iPhone um, eMac would look. So this is basically simulating the iPhone reading experience. Now this is not entirely uh, identical to the reading experience on the iPhone, but it should give you a good idea of how uh, reading takes place on this device. So as you can see, uh, once the user gets the eMac up and running, he's uh, faced with a uh, help message telling you how to navigate the eMac. This is really basic. You basically drag the pages, uh, tap on them to zoom, um, or you use the navigational buttons at the bottom. So I'm just going to try this. And um, as you can see, I can drag pages to the left or to the right to navigate the eMac. Now, obviously, I'm doing this with a mouse, and uh, the feeling is somewhat different when doing it with uh, your finger on the iPhone. But I'm sure you can imagine how that works. Um, so now I'm navigating the eMac. I can uh, choose to zoom in by double tapping. This opens the zoom window and shows me another little help message to help me get started. I can just close that by tapping. As you can see, I can now move around the zoomed area. I can zoom in on details. I can zoom out. And I can close zoom. Now there's a number of other options available in the mobile reader. Um, for instance, we've included a, a text display option. If you open this, you get the text from the page you're looking at. This is very useful since uh, iPhones display a rather low resolution. This uh, makes it a little easier to read the specific text on the page. Um, also, this actually allows you to copy and paste from the page if you need specific text excerpts. Um, there's also an index. So if I click that, you can see I get an overview of all the pages in my email. I can scroll down, and I can navigate directly to any page by clicking on it. The mobile reader also comes with full search functionality. So I can go in here. I can search for, let's say, Emacs Studio. I search, and it'll tell me where it was found and how many occurrences it was of that word on that page. 
So if I click here, you can see I'm taken to that page and uh, automatically put in text mode and the text I was searching for is marked on the page. Then I can choose to close this and you can see I've, brought, I've been brought to this page now uh, with what I was searching for. Um, we also have sharing functions on the mobile version and you can see here that I can share on uh, all the same uh, standard mobile networks that were included in normal Emacs Studio. And there's also a button for sharing directly uh, using email, and this is using the built-in functionality on iPhone and iPad, so I can't do that in this uh, simulated experience. Okay, so I'll go back. Now, I can also expand my control bar by clicking this little more icon, and this basically just gives me a list of, uh, of standard navigational controls where I can uh, move to previous pages, next pages, zooming, or jump to any page. So as you can see, this is a rather full-featured reading experience, although not uh, as encompassing. It doesn't include all the full features of the, um, of the full Emacs Studio. Now, I'm going to close this and uh, jump back to the publishing wizard. Um, now, you can see I made it to the FTP step, but since I don't want to actually publish anything online right now, I'll just go back uh, to the first screen of the publishing wizard, and I'll try to publish offline in instead of this. So I'll deselect online reading choose to publish Emacs for offline reading, click Next, and publish offline for Windows computers, since that's what I'm sitting on. So I'll click Next. I'll be faced with a default uh, location, and I think I'll just go with that. Next again, and publish, and now my Emacs is publishing. Now, what I'll be able to show you once this is published is uh, our new loader functionality, which is also new to this version. We've included a customizable loader, which uh, runs at the beginning of the Emac and gives you a much smoother loading experience than in previous versions of Emacs Studio. Uh, also, this can be customized with custom text. Uh, it follows the background color that you choose when setting up your Emac and by default shows you the front page of the Emac. But you can customize this image to, for instance, include your company logo or any other thing you want. Uh, now I just need to wait for this thing to publish, and I'll be able to show you very shortly. So now my Emac has been published, and I'll just click the uh, View Emac button. So this will open up in a new window. And as you can see here, my Emac is starting up with a new loading screen, uh, featuring a full shot of the front page, the title of the Emac, as well as a small loading bar. So this is a much nicer way to get your Emac up and running, and especially when publishing to online, this is uh, an important way of keeping the interest of your customers and readers. So I'm going to go ahead and close this um, and get back to the, uh, to the features of Emacs Studio. So I'm going to close the publishing window, and I'm taking back to the wizard where I was before. Um, so now, uh, to showcase some of the other features new in this version. Now, um, what you'll be seeing in this version is that we've added a, um, we've added some, um, as, as I just said before, we've added the loader, uh, which is a new feature of this version, and uh, it can be customized. This can be done from the styling tab in the wizard, and it can also be done from the document properties inside the toolbox. Now, as you can see here, I can uh, set a custom text for the loader, so I could call this uh, the reseller guide, since that's the name of my publication. And I can include a custom image here if I have uh, an image that I would prefer over the front page of the, um, of the Emac. If I go to navigation, I can uh, now go into the bookmarks and pages uh, settings. This was previously just called bookmarks. And uh, what I can do in here is I now have the option to go in and uh, do some uh, configuration of the uh, pages in the Emac. Um, we've added a new feature called the heading, which means that you can replace the default page name with a heading of your choice. So for instance, let's say instead of page one, I would just like this to say front page. Um, and I can also customize, um, first of all, 
what I want the first page number of the publication to be. Now this is useful if you have a publication that's an excerpt from a larger publication and you'd like to uh, maybe have it start on page X. Or if I have a, a series of pages in the front that are not numbered and I would like um, my page 1 to be, for instance, uh, the same as the physical page 3 of my publication. So let's say now I've added front page and I would like uh, to actually have that one be unnumbered. Then I can set my unnumbered starting pages to 1. But I'll keep my page number starting with 1 since, um, since I want the... Um, since I want the second page to actually be the first page. So if I save this and I click um, Preview, you'll be able to see that once I open the index window, that it'll show up as a front page, page 1, page 2, page 3, and page 4. So in this way, I've actually shifted the page numbers uh, forward, and I've been able to customly name my, um, my front page uh, the title I choose. So I'm going to close that, and uh, of course I can I can do many other changes to that to um, to have, for instance, uh, several name pages in the front and my first numbered page starting at a higher number if I wanted that. Um, so that's quite flexible. And um, I'm also going to show you something quickly here in the um, in the uh, media and content. Uh, step of the wizard. Now we've done some new additions to the uh, create link quick action. This was a request coming from many of our customers. So now when you click the uh, create link action we've added some more options to it. So you see I'll just choose to create a link on the on page layer and it'll come up here and it'll ask me what kind of link type do I want to create. Now previously you could only type in uh, into a standard typing box and it actually didn't accept, for instance, mail links. You had to do those manually. So now I can choose to do a web link, secure web link, a mail link, or simply a custom link if I just want to type in something like, let's say I want to link to an FTP or some kind of specific protocol, then I can do that also. So let's say I just want to do a standard web link. I'll go ahead and link to emaccreator.com and set it to open the blank window and then I'll click OK and uh, I'll place my link on the logo here. So I'll go like this, and I'll click OK. And something else we've added to, uh, to these auto-created links in this version is that we've added um, some roller effects. Now, part of the new features in this version is the new animation and effects uh, system, which allows you to add effects to objects. And we've, we've also used that in our auto-generated objects like the uh, links. So now you can see when I roll over the link, I actually get a little blur effect on it. And I also get a tooltip telling me where the link is pointing. Uh, and this goes for any kind of link you create, also for the mailing links, secure links, or custom links in there. So get a somewhat nice experience from doing that. Now this concludes the first part of the Emacs Studio 1.1 feature presentation. In the next part, I'll be taking a look at some of the advanced features and going into the toolbox for demonstrating those.